simple like a scientific floating point calculator and uh, using uh, there's a good current word that a user group will type either decimal or whole number uh, to perform some basic calculator functions using the Nexus 2 board and a keyboard and the results should be displayed on the uh, peripheral SCP display. The uh, specification of the itself was to uh, implement the design using the Nexus 2 Running microplays with the floating point unit, which actually uh, we found in thinking through how we want to do a calculator that when you go to synthesize a machine, you can actually select the microwave um, software processor, and one of the options is to enable or disable the FPU. It's disabled by default because it saves uh, a decent amount of space. So <laughs> uh, but uh, basically, all you can do is enable it and then keep track of what you're doing and it seems to work. Uh, actually, creating the floating point unit. Um, keyboard interface was the UART and the PS2 board uh, the board. And then calculator, because we're, we're doing decimal points, it needs to be able to switch between a fixed decimal, like the four digit accuracy, and a scientific notation. So something to uh, either the weather power to uh, be able to handle what kind of number you need to And then also we want to be able to handle uh, negative results. All right, so here are the system block diagram, and so notice FP, we're using FP for micro blaze, and um, PS2 UART um, to connect to the keyboard. And for software, it's very simple. It keeps, uh, until it gets the first entire number, it will just keep getting the key and check if you entered the clear key or if you entered one of the functions. And it will echo the input on the display so you know what you're typing. And then when you press enter, after you enter the second number, it should do the calculation and then display it depending on the magnitude of the number to so either fixed point with four um, decimal places or scientific notation. So we were um, pretty ambitious at the beginning. <laughs> uh, we were going to put more. Uh, so, but we, real, we found out that when, when you do use the floating point, it only uses like 10% more um, slices. The problem is it it has to import the floating point, um, basically floating point functions, and that increases your memory usage. So we actually had to increase our VRAM. So we, you need at least around, um, 11K to get the floating point unit, to even get floating point unit to work. And so, with that, we we had to we also had to try to code our own um, sine, cosine, tangent functions. Since if we try to uh, import math.h, it's going to bloat the code, and we have very very little space to begin with. And so we had to, we we tried doing that. We were just try. We we managed to get um, you know simple stuff, um, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. And one another thing we ran into is when you when you're working with um, floating point numbers, it tends to be, it defaults to double precision. Um, the floating point unit only um, in microbase only handles single precision. So that also, since the compiler has to switch back and forth to double convert back to float, that also bloats the code. So we had to basically be paranoid and explicitly cast everything to float. And this is the display, how it displays it. So we have, if it's less than uh, eight digits, basically, since we have we have a seven-digit precision with single single precision floating point, it keeps it as a uh, fixed fixed point. Otherwise, it'll switch over to scientific notation, so you don't overflow the the display. And numlock is used for reset. So I actually wrote. Some things to use a truncated uh, current series for like sine, cosine, tangent, um, but we were able to implement it and have it work correctly. Uh, so by the end, um, after having to deal with the code uh, size issues, we were able to uh, get the FP working on the microblaze and implement four basic functions of add, subtract, multiply, and divide using floating points. Um, and we implemented Part of it was having to do a floating point to character string conversion so that your result could be output to the uh, LCD display so the user could read it. And then also the actual fact that the user's uh, using the keyboard. So part of that had to be going through and figuring out 
what the baud rate was for a particular keyboard, um, kind of set that up, and we actually ran into a problem of the jumper is on the actual Nexus port being in the wrong spot for this. <laughs> so like the first time we tried it, we were getting signals on the oscilloscope, and then the next day we tried it again, we were getting nothing. It turns out the jumper has to be moved. It's like a jumper right next to the PS2 um, port that you have to move to even get a signal, apparently. So we moved it to the number and then... Uh, Is this going from 3.3 to 5? Yeah. Yeah. Even on the uh, keyboard field on the back, it actually separates it at 5 volts for most keyboards. That's yeah. Cool. So that's your that's really change. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're like trying to figure out... So that was like three hours. <laughs> 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 What notation are you guys using for your, is it infix notation? Like the number, yes. operation number? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Scheme is all prefix notation? Alright, so. Actually, I'll have like a list of numbers here to compare against. So you'll see like some round off errors because of um, the single point, um, single, single position floating point. So we'll do 3.1415 times two. And it should give us 6.2. That's pretty close. It's actually yeah off because again, uh, when you're working with floating point numbers, you get that trade-off between accuracy and the number range that you can represent. So like, like in um, most calculators, once you enter your initial, you know, this number times this number, you can repeatedly press equal to repeat the function. So we'll do that until we get past the fixed point to scientific notation transition. So at this point, Go, there we go. So once it reaches past eight digits, just so it can fit it in, it'll switch over to scientific notation with E. Cool. And then divide that by 1,000. And go back down. And there we go. And then lock Does it do it. negative too? It, it, does, it doesn't do the negative um, expo uh, yeah. scientific notation. And, but it, 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 it does deal with the negative numbers, so yeah. 8 minus 10. And I'll show that. So numbers less than 1? Yes. Or less than 0. Or what do you mean? Yeah, between, uh, between yeah. 0 and 1, yes. Yeah. It, can go, it can only show it in the, the fixed point notation, so yeah, right. up to four decimal points of um, precision. Right. And we just use the upper right hand corner of the LCD to show, to show if you had a negative number or a positive number. number. Uh -huh. so, so, same thing. And then the, we have the reset. Right? Yeah, reset. So we use like numlock for the reset and then the rest of the already labeled function keys on the keyboard. Yep. Cool.